So we want to just look at doing one sketch of a polar curve um, in this particular video lecture. So one thing that I want to note that will be helpful for doing a lot of um, curve sketching or different kinds of problems with our polar um, curves is um, making use of symmetry. So we have three different kinds of symmetry that can show up. We can have symmetry about the x-axis. So this would happen if I have this point r theta is appearing on my graph and also the point r comma negative theta. Okay, so those would have symmetry about the x-axis. We'd have symmetry about the y-axis if we have r theta on our graph as well as the point um, negative r negative theta or that can also be represented as r comma pi minus theta. So that's some point over here. So this is r theta. Um, this point over here, negative r, negative theta, because the idea is I could go down here, negative theta, and then backwards this negative r to get into this quadrant. We could also have symmetry about the pole, about the origin. If I have a point here, this is r theta, and also a point down here of negative r comma theta. Okay, so if we can identify that we have um, these different kinds of symmetries, then that can simplify the problem in, in some cases. So let's just look at one problem of actually doing a sketch of a polar curve. So let's say I want to sketch the graph of the polar curve r equals 4 plus 4 cosine theta, and I'm going to do that using a table of values as well as some symmetry. Okay. So a lot of the symmetry has to do with what happens if I plug in the negative version of the angle, okay? And the thing to note here is that cosine is an even function because if I have some point here that makes an angle theta with the x-axis, then the cosine of that angle is the same for both um, cosine of theta and cosine of negative theta, okay, because the x-coordinate for both points would be a positive x-coordinate. So this is equal to 4 plus 4 cosine theta, okay, so we have um, some x-axis symmetry here. Okay, so that'll be useful when doing our sketch. So let's make our table of values. So I have theta and r here. So I'll do theta here at 0, um, pi thirds, pi over 2, 2 pi thirds, and pi. Okay. When theta is 0, I know that cosine of 0 is 1, so this will be 8. Okay. At pi thirds, it's 1 half, so I get 6. That pi over 2 is 0, so this is 4. At 2 pi thirds, um, it would be negative a half, so this would be 2, and at pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, so I'd have 4 minus 4, so I get 0 here. Okay, So I can go about plotting those points to help me get my curve. So 0, 8 here, so an angle of 0, that'll be along the x-axis, and then a distance out of 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right here. And then I have this point of pi thirds 6. Um, pi halves 4, let's do that one next. Pi halves is right here at, um, along our y-axis, but we're out a distance of 4. Okay. Um, let's save the pi thirds and 2 pi thirds for last. Pi is a 0, that means I'm going to make an angle of pi, but I have no distance. The radius is 0, so that's at the origin. Okay, so let's look at plotting these um, pi thirds and 2 pi thirds. So pi thirds is about here, and 2 pi thirds about there. So along pi thirds, we're going out this distance of about 6. And along the um, 2 pi thirds, it's a distance of about 2. And then we want to look at connecting these dots in a smooth fashion. So it turns out they're connected out like this, and then we also have some symmetry going on. So I have a point here, here, and around here as well. So we can finish completing our curve and see that we have this nice heart shape here, um, and this is called a cardioid. 
Okay, so we'll continue looking at um, polar curves and calculus with polar curves um, in our upcoming classes. Let me know if you have any questions.